Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look at ways that we can come together to work together to help each other as we minister. And today we have Miss Rebecca Talbot, who is with us. Rebecca lives in Gallatin with her husband, Chris, and her two sons, William and James Elliott, and they are expecting their third son this spring. Rebecca is the women's uh, resident director at Welch College. She also owns a photography business and is a youth volunteer alongside her husband at Sylvan Park uh, Church there, right, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. yes, Rebecca yeah. also has a music education degree. She graduated from Welch College in 2012 and taught there in the Pitt County Public Schools uh, for a little over two years, uh, teaching music and uh, other issues there. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you're a mom and got another little person on the way here yeah. uh, coming into spring. So you've been focusing a lot about how to shepherd your child's heart. So you've already been doing this. You're going to be doing it some more as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about uh, how we can shepherd our children's heart. Yeah, so when I was first expecting William, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Pinson actually recommended a book to me yes. called Shepherding a Child's Heart. Uh -huh. And so, of course, I thought I need to read that book. And yes. I got it and... Chris and I both read it, and we loved it because I, it encouraged us to focus on our child's heart, um, mm -hmm. which we know throughout Scripture, Jesus talks about how our behaviors flow from our heart. Mm -hmm. And so um, that book has been really helpful in encouraging us and how we discipline and how we talk to our children. Yes. Um, I'm no expert, but I love referring back to this book and this mm -hmm. topic. Well, you say you're no expert, no. but you, you're doing it. No. You're right in the middle of it. And uh, uh, you also, you're working with uh, young people as well in a dorm setting. So you yeah. mentioned discipline. So yeah. tell us a bit about how we can shepherd our child's heart and the way we're disciplining our children as they come up. Yeah, so a lot, what really challenged me, um, but part of the topic in the book, talked about how we, and especially me, tend mm -hmm. to look at outward behaviors, even things that may be annoying mm -hmm. to me. And so especially my kids, you know, yes. if they sit down and be quiet, then I'm thinking, oh, they're being a good kid. Right. Um, and so focusing more on why are they doing what they're doing uh -huh. or um, the motivations behind the behavior. So I guess in regards to discipline, um, I'll use my sons, for example. Um, yeah. If they run after a toy... Yes. And I just say, who had it first? Mm -hmm. And just use that as my discipline of, you had it first, you didn't play. Then I'm really missing the heart of selfishness right. or of pride or preferring yourself other, over others. And mm -hmm. so that has been a, the biggest challenge to me in regards to discipline mm -hmm. for my own kids. And I know that applies to mm -hmm. even college students, you know, about mm -hmm. What, why are you doing the things mm -hmm. that you're doing? So you said a couple of things there. First of all, just because they're quiet, <laughs> don't be all yeah. happy about that. <laughs> why is it that they're quiet? Could they be sulking? Could they be mm -hmm. hurt? Could they be angry? Or could everything be just good, just fine, and they're, they're processing or they're thinking something through? So what I hear you saying is you're focused a lot about intentionally parenting your child. So mm -hmm. uh, when you you want to watch something or do post something on social media. No, you're thinking about what's why is my kid quiet? You're focused on that. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> what we have a tendency to do, well, why are y'all arguing and try to meet out some discipline? You're saying, think about what's behind it. Think about the heart and mm -hmm. so forth and, and where something happened, why something went along. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like this is really... Uh, you're trying to do this as a mother, be very intentional mm -hmm. in how you you raise these kids, how you help them to, to come to know the Lord, and you help them along. Mm -hmm. What else have you learned and been trying to enact as a mother? Yeah. Um, I, uh, keeping with, I guess, the same theme as discipline, mm -hmm. um, I've learned, especially, you know, from this topic about how discipline isn't just rebuke. Or, yes. You know, it's not just... Um, it mentioned that a lot of times we think of it as rules, correction, rebuke, yes. and discipline can go a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. um, encouragement, um, 
prayer together. I, there's just so many a other lot. types of communication that you can have with mm-hmm. your children instead of just don't do this. Um, and so that's, which that's easy for me to do. It's, yes. That's the easy thing is to say, don't do that and walk away mm-hmm. and be done. And so um, trying to have deeper conversations mm-hmm. or maybe leading by example in like ways of discipline or encouraging them. And mm-hmm. um, that, that's been a big challenge for me to, to go beyond just saying, don't do this. Okay. Do um, good, good. So the scripture talks a lot about discipline and yeah. especially the Proverbs. And yeah. so what you're saying that you've, you kind of have learned that it's more than do this, don't do this. It's more than, oh, rebuke yeah. because you did such and such. But it's, it's looking at uh, maybe some shaping and some molding mm-hmm. and looking at the heart of our children mm-hmm. and looking at uh, what we might do to try to help pull them along and point them toward the Lord and, and so mm-hmm. forth. So it's, it's all of those things then, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you've learned a lot about discipline and you've been <laughs> able to enact that as you've been rearing your two boys so far. Uh, what else is important for us as we think about how we can help our children develop the, the right kind of heart? Yeah, um, at least one, one area that I've needed to focus on more of that mm-hmm. I've learned to focus on is my personal relationship with God and how that is mirrored in my mm-hmm. parenting of my children mm-hmm. and the grace that I want from God or the grace that I've been given from Him. Mm-hmm. I need to model to them or I need to teach them. Yes. And so it's forced me to... I don't, look deeper at yes. my relationship with God so that I know how to model it mm-hmm. to them. Or then even to, so if, I guess when my boys get mad at each other, mm-hmm. you know, I try and think, okay, where in scripture, like what does God say about the family? And how yes. can I teach them that through this moment instead of don't be mad? Or, uh-huh. you know. So it's encouraged me and, and, um, yeah, it's encouraged me to dive deeper into mm-hmm. what God says, mm-hmm. look at how he is, you know, correcting me, instructing me, so then I can do it for my kids. That's not always something that mm-hmm. I thought of, you uh-huh. know. Uh-huh. So we've not gotten to a point where we've arrived, where yeah. we're the people we need to be and who we <laughs> mm-hmm. should be. The Lord's working on us, and so it sounds like you're saying we're using some of those same lessons with our children. and. Mm-hmm. Um, you've, you also are mentioning modeling. So mm-hmm. you're trying to, uh, we talk a lot about how things are called as well as taught. And so you're mm-hmm. trying to model grace. You're trying to model that with your, with your kids mm-hmm. as well. So, so that's, that's a wonderful thing. You mentioned at the beginning about how in our hearts, uh, that the scripture talks a lot about our hearts and developing yeah. Our heart. So, if we're not careful, bitterness can seep in. Uh, unforgiveness. Uh, uh, talk to us a bit about that and how you're you're trying to do that mold and shape your kids along in in that respect. Yeah. Um. So keeping them from getting, I guess, evil mm-hmm. things in their heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Because that. Um. I know it can mark, and in Luke, Jesus talks about that specifically. Like yes. those behaviors flow out of our heart, or you know the tree bites fruit Um, yes so i i think there's a lot of shaping influences Mm -hmm. that you know i as a parent want to influence my child want to give them direction but there's also other influences around them that aren't me and so i know that um outside myself you know like obviously my sin First, if I sin and influence my child in the wrong way, I need to ask for forgiveness and mm-hmm. and correct that. But outside of that, um, I think being really cautious of who your child's with, or yes. even my boys are young, like TV, it's huge. Oh, yes. um, or yes. you know, I know I have friends that their kids watch YouTube, mm-hmm. and we talked the other day about how. Um, there's even some things on YouTube that their kids have watched, and they're like, "Where did they learn that from?" Uh-huh. You know, or why yeah. are they saying that? It's a it's a well, YouTube video right. or a commercial on YouTube. It. Yeah, so I think um, trying to help your child put safeguards around mm-hmm. them, especially while they're young, um, mm-hmm. to keep evil things from getting in their heart. Yes, um, but then also helping them know what do you do when you do something wrong, mm-hmm. like teaching them about forgiveness and about you know, 
re- repenting of your mm-hmm. sin um, so that they're not just stuck. Yeah, you know? how we have grace. And so in some ways when our kids act out, it's not necessarily a bad thing because we know what's in their heart. Yeah. And uh, so we can kind of explore that and we can look at that. And what you're saying is almost dissect it and figure out, well, where did that come from? Was it something they observed of me in the house? Is it something they observed of their friends? And then you're saying a lot of of things out there in the media, a lot of things on the Internet and so forth. And uh, so we kind of want to watch that and and pay attention uh, to those things as well. Mm -hmm. I I liked what you said at the end there about forgiveness. So... Mm -hmm. A lot of messing up, a lot of sin, you know, Mm -hmm. really. And so what you're saying is we we keep, we're teaching our kids to come back and we repent of that and and, and go in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. So you've learned a lot from (laughs) trying to bring these two up and getting ready for the third one that's on the way, haven't you? And, uh, Mm -hmm. and, And trying to be prepared. Anything else you want to share with us about uh, you're, we're dealing with parents out yeah. there. Anything else maybe for parents? And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what advice you might give to pastors and church leaders as they're trying to help parents with these kinds of issues. Yeah. And um, I think the biggest surprise for me mm-hmm. as a parent has been that it takes intentional time. And I know mm-hmm. you mentioned that, being intentional. Um, the easiest thing for me to do is often not the best thing mm-hmm. that I need to do for mm-hmm. my kids because um, I can quickly give them something to pacify whatever's going aw- uh, whatever's going wrong yes. but actually miss talking to them about it or you know having those discussions where we can actually have spiritual conversations mm-hmm. um, so I I guess if I was giving myself advice yes. <laughs> or giving yes. any any parent advice is to carve out time where you can Mm -hmm. actually talk to your kids Mm -hmm. or talk with your spouse and your kids. Um, Having family time where maybe the TV's not on or you're doing something together where you can have those conversations because um, it's challenging to find the time to sit down or to, you know, get rid of distractions. I know that's the easiest thing that, you know, we typically struggle with. Mm-hmm. So being intentional um, mm-hmm. and finding good community. Yes, um, good, good community helps yeah. too. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about community here in a moment. But first thing, let's, let's go and think about Deuteronomy 6, which mm-hmm. I know is close to your heart. Yeah. So it talks about rising up, and then it talks about as you go along the way and as you go to bed at night and so forth. And so that's a way we can be intentional, doing something specific when our kids get up in the morning. As we drive drive them along the way, being intentional about the car time and what Mm -hmm. happens then, and especially at bedtime, um, what happens, you know, reading some scripture, talking to them about so f- some things like that to help them alone. Now, yeah. you were about to get into community, so tell us a bit about that. Yeah, um, um, yeah community, um, I think I feel especially, you know, drawn to that because Chris's family is in Michigan. Yes. Mine's in Georgia and Alabama. Yes. And so we've raised our kids away from our biological families. Yeah. yeah. And so that's been a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I, we've realized that when we try to do it by ourselves, or when yes. we're not looking for advice or when we, we're not surrounded by families that we can look mm-hmm. to, it can get, it gets discouraging. Um, mm-hmm. Parenting is hard. It's fun, right. but it's challenging. And so I think we've both learned that it's really helpful to us mm-hmm. to have parents in different seasons of life oh, yes. to ask them questions. Um, we love getting to ask parents that have some older kids. Uh-huh. Did your kids do this when they were young? Yes. Or how did you handle this? Mm-hmm. You know, or um, we have boys. And so um, seeing how I, I grew up with just sisters. And right. so I'm like, is this normal for this boys? Yeah. yeah. Is this this normal what is thing? This like? And so that's been really helpful. <clears throat> and I know that, um, that's part of D6, part mm-hmm. of what God wants us to do as a Christian community is yes. to help each other, mentor mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's 
vital to right, us. Right, right. Um, so it sounds like what you and Chris have done too, though, is you've taken Titus 2 and you're like, that is my chapter. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so we have people that are at similar walks of life that are good peers for you, kids, mm-hmm. same age, going through the same problems and so forth. But you're also talking about like that passage says, the older women teach the mm-hmm. younger women, the older men, the, the younger men, that you're talking to folks who've been through it. You yeah. may even have... <laughs> young people your age now and so you're saying that really helps it's really been helpful to you and something we would encourage (laughs) others to do as well well a lot of a lot of church leaders will listen to this podcast as well and they'll have folks like you and chris in their congregation (laughs) and what kind of advice would you give to them as how they could minister to uh, folks that are about to have three kids in the house you know how how can they be effective in helping uh, folks at your particular stage of life yeah. I think encouragement is mm-hmm. always helful um, especially we're, we're still newer parents you yes. know, our kids are younger um, and there's a lot of doubt where you think am I doing this right mm-hmm. or am I doing this right or wrong and so I think encouragement or even if correction is needed you know from mm-hmm. people at church that, that's helpful mm-hmm. yeah nicely and gently <laughs> Of course, Mm -hmm. because I think, at least for me, I mainly focus on what I'm doing wrong, you know, or I'm not, I haven't measured up. And so encouragement from a parent means a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, you're doing a good job with this. Or, hey, this is totally normal and Mm -hmm. this is a season. That that means a lot to us. Um, But also given opportunities um, for families and church to do things together, Uh I think is really helpful. because there's a lot of times where we may be doing different things mm-hmm. or, you know, the boys are at a different Awana class or right. there's things going on. And I think having opportunities where, hey, you know, as a family, let's do this together yes. at church. And I think we've we've had moments where the boys have either sung a song with us uh-huh. or something that m- meant a lot um, right. to us as parents. But we hope with them as children, they saw, oh, we're doing mm-hmm. church together, together. Oh, yeah as a family that, yeah. that's encouraging to us so that's not just church leaders that's older people even that you're talking yeah, about right. um, we have a tendency especially on social media to talk about how this generation's gone wrong you know <laughs> or that generation yeah. didn't get it or whatever so what you're saying is it would be helpful for folks to come along and say look this is you're doing all right here yeah. don't worry so much or don't sweat this so much uh, the lord's in this thing too and mm-hmm. we're here to help you so there's a yeah. lot that can be done with encouragement and they too can be good models and mm-hmm. uh, you know go back to that titus 2 passage there to honor be be honorable people and so our our kids can look at them as models so you're talking about that i liked what you mentioned there we have a tendency for Kids go to one Sunday school class, and we praise the Lord for that too. Because yeah. then we can, <laughs> yeah. we can have our class or mm-hmm. their own life group. The the uh, and often they'll have different churches, you know, a preschool and a uh, elementary age church and so forth. But you say it's it's nice for sometimes for people to come together, and so uh, that's one thing we did at our church. We used to would have. Um, a Good Friday service and a Christmas Eve service, and we would let folks know there's not a nursery. There's there may be a crying kid in there. There yeah. may be even be a running kid. You know, there could be a lot of mm-hmm. things, but that's that's what happens. That mm-hmm. if around a, a Christmas table, you know, you may have a yeah. kid to cry or whatever. We're about life. We're about young people, and uh, we, it's it's healthy to have us all come together. Yeah. So maybe we could, as church leaders, we could think about designing. Uh, we have occasional services in that manner, and then we in a congregation are like, "Hey, don't you worry. It's okay. You, yeah. you, you know, <laughs> my kid. You know, he bit his sister. You know, during a service uh-huh. 25 years ago. It's yeah. all right. Is that pretty much what I hear you saying. With yes, that? I think those things have meant a lot to me Mm -hmm. along the way Mm -hmm. one last thing i wanted to get with you is you were a teacher but it's hard to be a teacher and rear the kids so you've done something (laughs) else you're kind of living in a dorm Mm -hmm. um, helping some adult (laughs) kids yeah but also you've got a photography business Mm -hmm. that you're doing as well so tell us a bit about how you've chosen some of your 
your different career choices and how they work with rearing a family. Yeah, um, so when William was first born, I still worked um, in an office um, three days a week, and Mm -hmm. I really wanted to stay home with Mm -hmm. him, and so I you know, was trying to be creative and think of ways where I could do that. Yes. And um, thankfully God has provided us those opportunities. And so um, I began with photography just because it was something that I enjoyed and Mm -hmm. um, God has blessed me with people who, you know, have supported me with that. And um, when we, Chris loves teaching at um, Welch and ministering here. And so Um, this is our second year in the dorm when we Mm -hmm. decided to apply for this position in the, in the dorm, we wanted it to be an extension of what he was doing at the school already. And so at least my focus with my other jobs in relation to my family is that they would be outworkings of what we were already doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, me joining Chris at the college being just a connection to the ministry that he was already a part of. And then, um, with photography, maybe like a creative outlet that Mm -hmm. I enjoyed and, Mm -hmm. and using that, you know, to help our family. And so that's been, it's been tricky juggling (laughs) different responsibilities. And I've had to seek, um, some advice you mentioned Titus too. I had mm-hmm. to ask some mentors of okay, what, how do I handle this? What yes. do I need to say no to and right. say yes to? Um, because my family is a priority, and that's had to, I've had to keep reminding myself mm-hmm. of that um, in my activities and what I do. My children need me, and um, my husband needs me, so. You're Am I keeping my priority. priorities? Yeah, yeah, in the right sp- yeah. spot. But you're looks like you're finding a way to do that, which is also is a good model to uh, parents out there. They're trying. We have to make a living. Yeah. One day, these kids will go to school. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got um, retirement and so forth in the future. So uh, there's things to think about. And so what you're saying is that you looked at your situation and you found a way to to make it work to help you to keep your children and to keep Chris and and the Lord and all those priorities right. And it's a balancing act. It's a hard thing, but it looks like it's, it's working for you. Well, thank you. We're We're, we're, we're trying. So (laughs) folks can go to, I think uh, your own Instagram, Rebecca Uh, Talbot, and they can go and see some of the work there. And it's also a model of how, when we're trying to honor the Lord and, and trying to take care of our families, the Lord does provide for us and for us ways for us to use our gifts and so forth as well well we so appreciate you stopping by we know you're busy (laughs) with all the things you do but thank you for coming by and sharing with us thank you for being such a good model to so many of our young people uh, and for being so intentional about doing what you can to rear your own children to follow the lord thank Thank you you. thank you dr meany